I'm Tracy Victor, I live in Mackay, we've lived here for probably 13 years. Um, I'm a mother to Jace. We moved here after um, Jace's brother and, and my son, my husband and my son passed away when he was seven in an accident at home. For us that was coming to the Big Smoke, we lived out, out of town where it took you 20 minutes just to drive to the main road. It was a very different life, the kids were pretty much raised like free range chooks. It was a good life though, I think. Um, was allowed, we had very strong family values. Um, been married to my husband for 27 years, he's my best friend, wouldn't want for anybody else. And we have James, our son. And so how long ago did you move to Mackay? Probably 13 years ago, I think, is it? It's close to. 98. Yeah. Okay. And it's been good to us. I mean, we it we kind of had an idea of what we wanted in a in a rural community that we wanted somewhere for a good education for for Jace, where we had opportunities for ourselves in careers for my husband and I, where there was um, libraries that didn't have wheels under them. Um, that was important. We had universities, picture theatres, opportunities. Yep. Yeah, it's been good to us. We've enjoyed so it. So for you, Mackay has everything that you would need at this point in my life. Yeah. It ticks a lot of boxes, and it's been good. We've, I've created a career since being here, and you know, my husband's in a job that he's fairly confident in, and, and Jace is finding his place here too. Yep. And Jace, how about for you? Does Mackay have everything that you want? He has more than what I want or need, actually. Growing up in such a rural setting, coming to Mackay was a bit of a whoa. Everything's so accessible. It was made things probably. Harder in some senses, but a lot easier in others. Yep. And so, so you're how old now? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. And you, when did you come out? To my friends, my last year um, in high school. Um, two years later, to my mum. Okay. And is, was there a reason that you had that large gap? Probably because I needed my mum's approval more more than I needed my friends. Friends come and go. Um, but your mum's kind of, st you're stuck with her. <laughs> so you wanted to be really sure that you were gay before you told her or it was a courage I'd thing? I'd gone through the process of figuring, figuring that out. Like, I actually started questioning my sexuality when I was 12 and kind of went with the, I'm bisexual and then other people started labelling me and I started to realise that, yes, I wasn't actually interested in women. So it was more, I guess, testing the water to see if other people would accept me because I knew, I, in deep inside, I knew my mum would, but I think it was more about my father and whether I'd have a home if I'd... So you thought if you told your mother, well then of course your father would find out and then that, that was your true well, fear. yeah. And so how was, how was that experience, telling, you, telling your mother and then telling your father? I didn't actually tell my father, my mum did. And I was kind of like, why did you do that? Why? So, you, so you, your fears were founded that, yeah, that yeah, if you did tell your mother that it's exactly what would happen. A little bit, yeah. I think you were probably worried about Dad's response to that. He's a fairly traditional blokey bloke, you know, he's six foot, broad, big man, does a man's job, you know. Um, and, and maybe was a bit concerned about how he'd respond to that. But he's been okay. I mean, his re initial response is, he's my son, I love him, and I accept who he is. He would love it if it was different, because we, you know, as I said, lucked out on the grandkids' stakes. Um, Bob's the, the only member of his family to have children. Um, Jace is our only son, so, you know, his chances of the his name living on is <laughs> very slim. So, I mean, obviously that's the first thing that you've you've said, so that did that play heavily on your mind, like, For me, when, when he came out? For me, that was my big issue. Um, it wasn't about um, who Jace was or who he was attracted to or who he'd fall in love with. It was purely about me. I had expectations, and one of those was to be a grandma. I was going to be a rock and grandma. I was really looking forward to it, and you know, I was. It was. I kind of felt like I'd been ripped off. I'd lost one son, and um, clearly the the, old, the choices faced to have to have children are going to be very difficult and, and limited. So, you know, it wasn't all about me kind of moment. But at the end of the day, as a parent, when I was parenting and bringing up my children. All I really wanted for them is to find their place in society and be able to interact with society in a way that let them be who they are and not break any laws, hmm. <laughs> really. And, and produce some grandchildren to dote on. Well, that was purely, purely about me. Yeah. You know, that wasn't about my actions. My actions as a parent were about what I hoped to offer for my son 
the grandchildren were purely about me. Um, had always been around kids all the time, and you know that family is quite important to me. And so, how have you dealt with that? Since like, have you have you dealt with that? that um, I guess it's an ongoing <laughs> issue. I get really annoyed with people going, "Oh, you never know what will happen." You never know. Um, I just think my mum says, you know, "Oh well, you know, don't worry about it." And I'm like, "Well, that's okay for you. You've got a whole handful of grand great grandkids. You don't know what know what it's like." And that connection, I guess, that I had hoped to build with a grandchild is um, never going to happen. There, there's lots of children in my life. It's not like I'm going to um, shrivel up from like I do wonder what's going to happen to my grandma power if I implode or something, you know. <laughs> um, what were you going to say? You just adopt everyone else's kids. <laughs> they all end up at my house anyway at one point, but yeah. So you were involved quite quite heavily in the, the youth support group here in Mackay, the, um, the Rainbow Youth? youth. Um, yeah. I guess I'm not, I wouldn't say heavily, I'm very aware of my role um, and I get, I'm, I'm not gay. So I just, I need to be aware of what my role is. So I'm here as a mentor. Mm -hmm. I've worked heavily in community for most of my life. So my goal is to assist the group to set up their, um, themselves in an, as an association to have you know their policies and processes so that you've got a good foundation to build on and then hope to step away from that, that role um, and maybe move into something else I may be needed with in or without of the group. Very much depending So do you feel that you're getting a lot more of your your motherly love out there in the group uh, because of your role in the group? Um, I feel very accepted by the group. Um, never short of a hug when you turn up, you know. Um, but I don't, I don't need to mother these guys. They've got their own mothers, they've got their own families. I'm, I'm me and if I have something within me that they need, I'm happy to share that with people. And so, so I mean, obviously it was such an important thing for you. So how, how are you dealing with with uh, the fear of not having grandchildren so readily as if uh, Jace was, was straight? It doesn't um, take up my every thought. It's not, I'm not obsessed about it. I mean, initially it was, and I got really ticked off with the guys upstairs and I threatened a really big DNM when I get there one day. <laughs> they need to be doing some explaining. So you are religious? No, I'm no? talking about the guys upstairs, not the only thing. A person uh, upstairs. There's yeah. a whole group of them up there that I work with. Um, I mean, I have my own spiritual belief, and I believe that life turns out as it's meant to be. There's a lesson for me to be learning in this, and um, I think I'm pretty cool with it. I mean, it would be delightful if there was an opportunity. Um, but I mean, Jace has spoken a couple of times about um, women asking him to help out in the child department, um, and I've been really quite clear about it. you need to. This is. You need to negotiate this because you need to identify what your role in the child's life would be. And, um, and what about the, the change in the surrogacy laws uh, here in Queensland, which now allow uh, same-sex couples to be to be put on the birth certificate, so so gay men and uh, gay women can can be uh, named as parents on the on the certificate. So does that give you uh, some solace that that you will be able to have genetic grandchildren? It's not about the genetics, it's about the relationship. Yep. Um, I think, sorry, go on. I've recently been talking to friends about the fact that um, I know if I was to adopt or have a, another woman produce my child for myself and my partner, that my mother would love that child just as much as she would a genetic child, but I think that bond would be something even more. I think when you have some, like when it becomes almost a legal transaction, it changes Live, like if if Jace were in a same in a in a heterosexual relationship and there was a child there, there and they broke up, there's difficulties in grandparents having those kinds of relationships with their grandchildren. I think it would be further complicated if the, if it was a child from um, an arrangement through same sex relationships. Um, yeah, sometimes we get a bit ripped off in the grandparents' takes, but we're talking a lot about it now. It's something that I. I don't believe will happen in the near future. It's not something I'm going to lose sleep over. Um, I'm so, Jace, you don't feel pressured to be out there producing grandchildren? <laughs> no, not one bit. No. Like because I think I've been very clear. Like it's my, it was my expectation of and what, my life. And what would your advice be to 
the, the huge amount of mothers of uh, gay children out there that, that feel that same, same way and probably haven't come to terms with it the way you have, what would your advice be to them? You've only got today. You've only got this moment right here and right now. And if I were to put pressure onto Jace to to do what I wanted him to do, he wouldn't be living his life and he wouldn't be happy. And, you know, there's that saying, be here now. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. I don't know what's going to happen in 10 minutes. So I have to make the most of the moment here and now. Um, and I have a son who... Um, who loves his mum, who's happy to talk to his mum. We have a great relationship. Um, he won't leave home. No. <laughs> um, but he's very supportive of me. We, we kind of, um, I think we have probably a more adult relationship than, um, I see him as a housemate now, but, you know, but not so much as my child living at home. And I, yeah. You just gotta go with the flow, really. I, don't, I can't change him. I don't yeah. want to change him. If I change one part, I change the whole part, and I don't have a right to do that. Hmm. Or the power. So you don't feel that that you feel like a mother should just deal with her her expectations as her own expectations and not place them on oh, on her gay child. You've got to identify child? what's yours, and you. I don't think you ever a mother ever sees your child. Or well, hang on, personally, I never saw Jace as a sexuality. Um, he is, this is Jace. And, I mean, I mean, if I were to, you know, have brought him home and went, he is Jace, he will be a doctor. God, I wouldn't have used my doctor. <laughs> I mean, that's expectations of mine, so you can't do that. Think, do your best, bring him up, cross your fingers, um, and hope for the best, really.